hello guys welcome back to a to z dentistry so today we will be studying about sialography which is a method for analyzing the structure of salivary glands in detail so without any further delay let's get started so today we will be studying about sialography under the following subheads definition chemical agents phases of the procedure sialographic appearances indications contraindications and different sialographic techniques so let's move forward so by definition sialography is a specialized procedure for radiographic demonstration of major salivary glands by introducing radio opaque contrast medium into the ductal system so according to the definition this is basically a procedure wherein we introduce a radio opaque contrast medium into the ductal system of the salivary glands right so that we can clearly visualize the structure of our salivary glands meaning the internal structure of the gland so as we are using radio opaque contrast media therefore this is a specialized technique right which is basically a radiographic demonstration of the major salivary glands because the minor salivary glands are very small so we won't be able to uh, either locate them or if at all we do so then injecting a radio opaque contrast media would be difficult therefore this technique is largely limited to our major salivary glands that is parotid gland submandibular gland and sublingual gland right so by definition itself we are clear that uh, this is a kind of procedure right which is a radiographic demonstration wherein we are injecting a kind of a contrast agent so that by means of that agent some of the structures would appear radio opaque others would appear radio lucent so that we can clearly identify any kind of disease or disorder pertaining to any particular type of major salivary gland so this is a slide demonstrating the sialographic view of submandibular gland right so this is the radio opaque contrast medium which has flown into the wall of ductal system of the submandibular gland and as a result we can clearly visualize the ductal system of the gland right along with its uh, branches right as we know that the ductal system goes like a tree it branches out at re regular intervals so this particular appearance is very prominent here we can clearly demarcate the ductal system of the mandibular gland by means of the injected radio opaque medium so basically this is what sialography is all about right so we can now assume that as we are a visualizing anatomy of a particular gland or uh, to be precise ductal system of the particular gland so this technique is largely used to identify any pathological conditions associated with our major salivary glands so let's get to know about the contrast agents the radio opaque agents which are used for sialographic technique so basically these type of contrast agents are divided into two solutions the first one is the aqueous based solutions that means these are water based solutions and the second one is the oil based solutions right meaning that the base of the solution has viscosity equivalent to oil and in case of aqueous solution the viscosity would be much less they are in aqueous phase so examples of aqueous based solutions are ionic aqueous solution the most commonly used type of dye here is dry triazoate right this is also known as urographene and we can also use non ionic aqueous solution right that is omnipic so these are the two types of aqueous based solutions which are used for sialography oil based includes iodized oil which is the lipidol oil right see this oil is derived from the poppy seeds so let's try to figure out what are the advantages associated with aqueous based solution so as i have discussed previously the viscosity is much less for aqueous based solution so while injecting this dye into the ductal system we do not have to put a lot of pressure right onto the syringe much less amount of force is needed to push the dye inside the 
ductal system whereas in case of oil based solution because of the increased viscosity of the dye it is quite difficult to push the solution into the ductal system disadvantage would be in case of oil based solution that oil based solution will not be excreted as rapidly as that of aqueous based solution because of the increased viscosity again but this would be an advantage for the aqueous based solution as their viscosity is much low they would be easily excluded uh, by the major salivary gland so this was about the advantage and disadvantage associated with aqueous based solution and oil based solution so let's move on towards the phases of the procedure so the cialographic examination basically involves a complex procedure which is divided into three phases so our first phase is the pre operative phase which is followed by filling phase and then the last step is the emptying phase so as the name itself indicates we can assume that in pre operative phase we will be taking some radiographs as whole of this procedure is largely a radiographic type of procedure so obviously we will be requiring some pre operative and post operative radiographs so in pre operative phase we are largely concerned with uh, the taking certain pre operative radiographs which is followed by a filling phase so obviously as the name itself indicates in filling phase we will be injecting our radio opaque dye into the ductal system which then would be followed by the emptying phase wherein all the radio opaque dye which has been introduced into the major salivary gland will be gradually eliminated from the gland so let's get to know the details of each of this phase in detail so our first stage is our pre operative phase right so this basically involves taking some pre operative radiographs now when we are taking a pre operative radiograph we need to examine certain things right before undertaking the procedure there are certain things which must be evaluated so our first thing to evaluate would be the presence of any radio opaque obstruction right we must see if at all there is any inherent radio opaque obstruction present because if we encounter this later then we might not be able to figure out whether it is a pathology or it was inherently present before our procedure so it is very important to maintain a record so as to if we are visualizing any radio opaque obstruction before the actual filling phase right so our next uh, thing to examine in the pre operative radiograph would be position of the shadows of normal anatomic structure that may overlie the gland such as the hyoid bone now hyoid bone serves as a very important thing which we must always examine our pre operative phase because uh, most of the times this bone might appear as overlapped right over the gland so it is very necessary that we rule out certain shadows of normal anatomical structure with particular reference to the hyoid bone so uh, this is how a pre operative uh, radiograph looks like so within this radiograph uh, we will take a note of any radio opaque structure which are present so in this case uh, we can see that there is as such no uh, radiographic thing visible right so this is how we evaluate uh, any kind of artifact which might be present before our actual filling phase has taken place second of all we need to see for any uh, thing which might otherwise be interpreted as artifact any structure which is overlying our salivary gland so we need to particularly look for higher bone so these are the two things we which we must keep in mind while we are looking at our pre operative radiographs before our actual filling phase so moving on towards our second phase which is our filling phase this is the most important phase of our cialographic procedure so for the filling phase to take place there are certain steps which must be followed so our first uh, step would be using a pedontal probe or a lacrimal probe in order to dilate the sphincter right there is a sphincter which is present at the ductal orifice as we are very well known with the fact that whenever there is a ductal opening definitely there would be a presence of a sphincter muscle so we'll need a pedontal probe in order to dilate the sphincter which is present at the ductal orifice before we could actually pass on our cannula right so we need to pass the tip of our cannula so 
the cannula which is there it has a blunt needle right which is present at its proximal end so either we can use this cannula right or we can use a catheter as well right our this cannula or catheter would be connected by an extension tubing to a syringe now this syringe is basically loaded with our radio opaque contrast media right so here we are kind of uh, creating a system wherein we can actually push our radio opaque material uh, via the ductal orifice which is present directly into our ductal system so our second step would be to continue injecting the solution until and unless our patient feels slight discomfort right when the patient uh, complains of slight discomfort this is the stage where we need to stop right and the most important thing to remember here is that we need to infuse this contrast media very slowly we cannot just rapidly inject it right slowly over a period of minutes we will be injecting the solution right now because our dye would contain iodine it would impart the radio opaque hue to our structure right after our filling phase uh, has been done right we will then be proceeding towards our emptying phase but the important point here to note is that we need to assure that we have undertaken this phase very cautiously so the important thing here is that we monitor whole of this procedure by means of a either using a static films or by using a fluoroscopic method right uh, so ideally what we do in clinics is that we take two radiographs at right angles to each other right so that we can see whether uh, the dye has completely uh, flown into our ductal system so this constitutes our filling phase so these are some of the pictures of the filling phase as we can see in the first picture here we are using a periodontal probe in order to dilate the ductal orifice right then we will be using our cannula right in order to penetrate the ductal system so this is our next image wherein we can see that we are cannulating our ductal orifice right now this would be connected to a syringe which would be loaded with our radio opaque solution and via this tip we will be injecting our radio opaque contrast media into the ductal system so this is the pictorial representation of the filling phase so under filling phase our third step was to take certain static uh, films or radiographs in order to assess whether or not our dye has penetrated wall of the ductal system so this is how we take uh, radiographs we can uh, take two radiographs at right angle to each other so that we can see whether our dye has completely penetrated the ductal system so this is how the radio opaque contrast media looks inside the ductal system so these are not the ideal ones these are the pathological appearances but these images are just for the reference as to how the radio opaque contrast media flows inside wall of the ductal system and gives us the image of the complex anatomy of the salivary gland so our last step our last phase is the emptying phase now as the name indicates we will be emptying the gland of the radio opaque media which has flown inside it right so the gland is typically allowed to empty for about a five minute and in this period we won't pro do any kind of stimulation technique in order to stimulate the flow to aid in excretion right basically uh, we tell the patient to remain still right so that the gland can empty for a period of about three to five minutes ideally it is five minutes right otherwise what we can do is if at all the dye uh, which we have used is lipidol right which is highly viscous as it is oil based so we can use lemon juice so that we can aid in the excretion of the contrast media so this is required in some cases uh, but if we are using aqueous solution usually this lemon juice is not required the gland typically gets emptied in a period of about five minutes for most of the patients so this is the radiographic representation of the emptying phase here we can see that uh, there is complete absence of dye whole of the radio opaque uh, dye has been excreted out of the ductal system and uh, post-operative radiograph is necessary so that we can 
uh, evaluate whether or not the dye has been eliminated completely out of the ductal system or not so in this radiographic film we can visualize that whole of the dye has been excreted out of the ductal system so this constitutes our emptying phase so let's move on towards the coelographic appearances which is the most important part of this video and which is also very important in terms of exam point of view because either MCQ or SAQ might be asked regarding the coelographic appearances. So our normal ductal architecture basically has appearance of branched leafless tree. Here you can see that this is the ductal anatomy, right? This is our submandibular gland here, which you can see, right? So this is the image I have put up side by side so that you can clearly appreciate that these two images basically clearly resemble our branched leafless tree. It has various branches you can see here right. The dye has flown into the wall of the main ductal system as well as the peripheries right here you can see. So this is our branched leafless tree here in the picture I have depicted. See this is the same thing. So our normal anatomy of the ductal system basically is that of a branch leafless tree. Moving on towards the normal ductal structure pertaining to our parotid gland. So basically it appears as a tree in winter appearance. Here can you see this is the main ductal system right and the peripheries here you can appreciate that these are all the branches right and there are small flakes right can you see here at the termination of the branches there are very small minute flakes this is nothing but our snow what has been referred to as snow here so basically the normal ductal structure of our parotid gland is tree in winter appearance as the tree looks in winter right in winter there is snow right so because of that snow here that snow has been referred to as this tiny projections which are present at the periphery of the gland so our parotid would look like a tree in the winter appearance so important thing is that this is our normal structure there is nothing pathological here right our normal parotid gland appears as this way in coelography moving on towards the normal ductal structure for our submandibular gland this has been referred to as bush in winter appearance if you remember our parotid gland was tree in winter appearance so this difference is because parotid gland is a much larger gland right it is the largest gland so therefore it has been referred to as tree here therefore it was tree in winter right but our submandibular gland is slightly smaller than parotid therefore it is a bush it has been compared to the bush so this is bush in winter appearance i guess there is no oh, difficulty in remembering this because it is very synonymous with the gland itself so here can you see this is the main ductal system and at the periphery we can see slight branching and again tiny pinpoint dots of what has been rightly called as snow which is again synonymous with winter right so this is our bush in winter appearance if we try to recall in case of parotid gland it was a much uh, larger uh, thing right the branches were much spread out and it appeared quite large as compared to that of our submandibular gland therefore it was referred to as tree in winter and our submandibular gland is referred to as bush in winter appearance moving on to certain pathological disorders wherein we can make out certain signifying changes within the sialograph so our first pathological condition is that of known opaque sialolith now as the name itself indicates that this particular type of sialolith is not radio opaque meaning that it is not radio opaque as in it won't be visible as a white structure it will appear as radio lucent that is it will appear as a black a kind of a structure within the sialogram so most of the time the salivary calculi also referred to as sialolith are radio opaque and because of this property we can clearly make them out within a sialograph we can chalk them out very easily but however in certain cases that is about in one to two percent of the cases this non-opaque sialolith is a common finding right in these cases 
सो हाउ वी कैन मेक आउट अ नॉन ओपेक सेलोलिथ इज दैट इट विल अपियर एज अ वॉइट और अ डिफेक्ट अ कंटिन्यूएशन डिफेक्ट विद इन द डक्टल सिस्टम एज हियर यू कैन सी this is a defect right there is loss of continuity here so this is our non opac sialolith right that is it is a radio lucent kind of a sialolith which is present moving on towards our next pathological condition that is sialadenitis so basically as the name itself indicates itis meaning that it is an inflammatory condition so sialadenitis basically refers to inflammatory enlargement of the salivary glands and this is a more common clinical finding in case of parotid and submandibular glands it is an inflammatory enlargement of the gland so if in this cases we go for a sialography we will see a sialectasis appearance the appearance is known as sialectasis appearance that is appearance of focal collection of contrast media within the gland so here you can see that there is a focal collection of the radio opaque dye which we have injected here as well can you appreciate it the tiny dots this is nothing but focal collection of the radio opaque contrast media within the gland so this sialy adenitis produ produces a sialectasis appearance meaning that there will be focal collection of the contrast media within the gland like this there will be tiny dots of the radio opaque material which would be present within the ductal system so this is how we can identify sialy adenitis in a sialogram moving on towards our next pathological condition that is sialodocytis so sialodocytis basically is also known as ductal sialy adenitis meaning that it is an inflammation of the ductal system of the salivary gland docytis basically here refers to doc means ductal system and itis mean inflammation so this is basically inflammation of the ductal system of the salivary gland right it might also be associated with salivary duct strictures and salivary gland stones the calcula this might occur simultaneously as well so the appearance which it produces is a sausage link appearance can you see here in this picture this is very similar to that of a sausage right so this is how sialodocytis looks like so as the name itself indicates that it is inflammation of the ductal system so the main duct of the gland would appear as sausage like because there wouldn't be flow of the contrast media towards the periphery the media will tend to get accumulated within the duct itself the main duct producing slight bulging of the duct and therefore the sausage like appearance right so sialodocytis basically produces sausage like appearance in this picture also you can clearly appreciate that the appearance is very very similar to that of sausage in this picture also right so this is the appearance of sialodocytis moving on further our next pathological condition is sjogren syndrome so basically it is a type of autoimmune disorder which is very common in post menopausal women right which is associated with bilateral enlargement of parotid glands and other major salivary gland also and it is usually associated with other autoimmune disorders like renault's syndrome right and other or disorders like arthritis as well so basically in this particular syndrome we will find a snowstorm appearance right and this is re referred to as cherry blossom appearance or branchless fruit laden tree appearance as well so this is very pathognomic for sjogren syndrome and this is the most frequently asked mcq question or else you might get a short note on sjogren syndrome there also you'll have to mention this under the heading of radiological features so this is how the cherry blossom appearance looks like can you appreciate the main duct is appearing as a main trunk of the tree and the peripheries are nothing but the branches and there is focal collection of uh, small uh, amounts of radio op uh, radio opaque media can you see here so this is our cherry blossom appearance as the tree appears right the cherry blossom tree likewise the gland will appear also here if you can see there are no branches but there are focal collection of the radio opaque media so therefore it is also known as branchless fruit laden tree appearance there are branches 
sorry there are no branches but however it is densely populated with many fruits right so the name branchless fruit laden tree appearance so there are three pathognomic appearance for Sjogren's syndrome snowstorm appearance cherry blossom appearance and branchless fruit laden tree appearance Moving on further, we have intraglandular neoplasm, meaning that tumors of the salivary gland which are located within the gland itself, right? So, it will produce ball and hand appearance and this is common for all types of carcinomas associated with salivary gland. In this picture, can you appreciate this is appearing as if it is a hand and within that hand, can you see this ball, this radiolucent thing? So, this is our ball in hand appearance and this is very common appearance which we can encounter in case of any benign or malignant tumor associated with salivary gland. Moving on towards the indications of cyalography, again very important. So, basically, there are only three main indications for this procedure. It is mainly used to determine the following presence or position of calculi or other ductal obstruction. As we know that whenever we inject any radio opaque media and if at all we see any continu continuation defect or an area wherein the radio opaque media isn't really flowing very well, we can definitely suspect a calculi which will most of the cases appear as radio opaque however as we have studied previously in about one to two percent of the cases it might appear as a non-opaque cyalolith as well so cyalolith that is salivary duct calcula is one of the main indications for cyalography or any form of ductal obstruction for that also we can undergo with cyalography our next indication is extent of ductal and glandular destruction secondary to any obstruction so in most of the cases what happens is that because of any ductal obstruction the part of the duct which is remaining proximal or distal to it undergoes massive amount of destruction that is because there is lack of salivary flow the uh, the saliva tends to pool around only at the proximal end and the distal end is largely devoid of any secretions and in case this illness remains for a prolonged period of time then that part of the gland may undergo atrophy that is nothing but the destruction so extent of ductal and glandular destruction can be evaluated using cyalography then extent of glandular breakdown uh, see in most of the cases the internal structure of the gland may undergo complete destruction mainly in case of tumors carcinomas right whole of the ductal architecture is uh, compromised because of the invasion caused by the carcinoma itself so by cyalography we can know the extent of glandular breakdown so these are the three main indications for undergoing cyalography moving on towards contraindication for cyalography again we have only uh, three contraindications the first one is allergy to the contrast agent as we have discussed previously there are two types of contrast agents which are most frequently used aqueous solution and oil based solution and most of the agents mainly contain iodine right these are derived from iodine and the patient who is allergic to iodine so allergy to the contrast agent is the main contraindication for cyalography second is presence of any acute infection or inflammation right whenever there is discharge of any exudate or pus from the ductal opening in such cases we cannot undergo cyalography as our procedure requires dilatation of the duct and injecting the cannula if there is already ongoing infection or inflammation because of the agent it might get pushed even further into the ductal system making the condition worse the inflammation may travel to wall of the ductal system producing increase in the signs and symptoms for the patient so we don't want that therefore in case of acute infection or inflammation cyalography is contraindicated our next contraindication is whenever our preoperative radiograph shows any calculus which is very close to the ductal opening. Now if at all our calculus is very close to the ductal opening as we know that via the duct we will be inserting our cannula and via this we will be injecting our radiopic media. So if at all the calculus is very very close then because of the pressure of the flow of the diorite which will be flowing to the ductal system the calcula may get dislodged within the duct itself right because of the pressure the calcula will be forced further 
inside the ductal system and we don't want that as we know that if the sialolith is very close to the ductal opening then via means of uh, asking the patient to suck a lime or by just uh, manually milking the gland we can easily remove the sialolith if it is very very close to the ductal system however if it is very far to the ductal system then we'll have to undergo a surgical procedure for removal of the sialolith so if we are undergoing sialography in such cases we have to locate that where exactly is our salivary duct calculi right if it is very close to the gland then we will not advise the patient to undergo sialography because of the risk of dislodgement of the calcula moving on further towards different sialographic techniques which are used the first one is the simple injection technique this is something which we use routinely as we have discussed previously other is continuous infusion pressure monitor technique as i have told you that we have to be very slow while injecting the media we cannot uh, put excessive amount of pressure on the syringe right because that might damage the ductal system of the gland so therefore this continuous infusion pressure monitored system Uh, provide just with that advantage that we can monitor the pressure right in this case and therefore because of continuous monitoring of the patient we can have advantage that we are not putting any extra amount of pressure more than what is required right so these are the two techniques which are commonly used for sialography moving on towards the last session of our video that is the exam tip section so on the exam tips what is the most important thing in sialography first would be the appearances as we have discussed numerous appearances so these are very important in terms of mcq questions right mcq can be asked then second one is regarding sjogren's syndrome so in that case if at all you are asked sjogren's as an mcq then also you will have to mention radiographic features in that you will have to mention about the characteristic appearance that is the cherry blossom appearance branchless fruit laden tree appearance and the snowstorm appearance so these are the things which must be mentioned other thing is that whenever uh, we are attempting a question it is always better to draw diagrams as i have told you previously so these are some of the schematic representation of sialograms right which are very pathognomic for certain diseases the first one is describing sialolithiasis right second one is for sjogren syndrome third is indicating sialadenitis and the fourth one is our neoplasm right intraglandular neoplasm producing ball in hand appearance so these four diagrams you can definitely draw when you are asked for various appearances in sialogram other important thing is that you must remember certain indications and contraindications for sialography then you must know at least two names of the contrast agents which are used routinely for sialography so these are the important things as far as exam point of view is concerned this is a very interesting topic and this is a very frequent radiological investigation which is most commonly undertaken in case of salivary duct calculus or calcula so you must know this at least you must have a brief uh, overview or idea of this topic so i hope you have understood this topic well i have tried to cover everything in a very comprehensive way if you like this video don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel and press that bell icon for getting notified this is dr snail signing off bye bye take care